The Dragons of Summer. Dreams are funny things. Be careful what you dream. They say it may come true. For centuries, humankind dreamed of space travel, of leaping to the stars. 200 years ago, the leap was made. 50 years ago, humanity came back from the stars, changed and broken. The only aliens were our own restructured and mutated selves. The star colonies didn't work out. We now live together on an aging planet and do the best we can. They say that bureaucracies never change. I wouldn't know. I've only worked for this one. Hello, OOS, how can I help you? I'm sorry, sir. You want animal welfare. I'll switch you. Hello, sir. I've got the fish on the water breathing mammals project whenever you need it. Chief, can we talk for a minute about the Anderson tapes? Looks to me like the wrong database. Oh, and have a Danish. He just brought them. Thanks. Oh, and Jimmy? Yes, sir. Don't call me chief. Oddly enough, the ordinary things of life, eyeglasses, neckties, danishes, poverty, seem to stay the same through time, while complex things like transportation change constantly. They call it Thompson's Law. The organization of Omsbud Services was started to help ex-colonials reintegrate into society. It has been determined that clients possessing more than one head no longer qualify for duplicate education allowances unless more than one personality can be proven. Well, more bullshit. Since society at large wants to forget that an eighth of the population is in some way mutated or alien and certainly doesn't want to pay to help them, it makes my job interesting. Hello, OOS. Frank's here. Oh, hi, Brian. Listen, are they serious about the personality proof crap? Do they know caseworkers aren't checked out on psi sensors? It means for every application, they'll have to find a tech. And yeah, I know. I know you don't make the rules. So what can I do for... Oh, yeah, the prosthetic face allocations. 198 credits per? That does sound high. Give me the code on that. No, I, I don't see a third level authorization on it. I'll tell you who you should network with on this. Bonita Krebs. She's exec fifth level at United Polymers. I'm sure she can get you a better quote. No, sorry, no lunch for me, Brian. I've got a 10 o'clock. Then I've got to wade through reports till three. Excuse me, chief. We've got a problem out here. Right, Brian. Look, I'll catch you later. Bye. Let me go. I gotta see the head guy. I gotta see the guy in charge. I've got the quiet gas. Hold him still. I'm Chester Franks, regional director. What seems to be the problem? Goddamn paperwork's the problem. Goddamn runaround. Nobody listens is the problem. Crack a few skulls is the answer. 
Marcia, are you giving a runaround to Mr.? Uh, his name is Freeman Baxter, sir. And no, I wasn't. His insurance underpaid on a claim, but he wouldn't. Too damn much paper. I want my goddamn money. Why don't you tell me about it in my office? It's cooler and we can talk this over. Well, okay, but no goddamn paperwork. The point is, the doctors say, if I go back to work with my hands burned, there could be permanent damage. But the insurance people says, I should only get one third as much money because I got three times more hands than normal. But all of me's out of work. Yeah, I see. Uh, let me try a phone call. Hello. This is Chet Franks at OOS. Is the supervisor there? Look, a client of ours, Mr. Freeman Baxter, is having some trouble collecting on a claim. No, that's Baxter with an X. And I'd like you to... I see. No, that's not good enough. What I want is your guarantee. Now he's checking. Here, uh, fill these out, will you? The more information I have, the better. Um, sure, I guess. Phone calls very seldom work, but clients like them. Shoveling paper at a big company is infinitely more effective, but clients hate it, so you compromise. The point is, Mr. Baxter paid in his money in good faith, and he deserves good faith in return. We aren't going to let this drop. And sometimes you even get the job done. I'll give them about three weeks to absorb the message, and if you haven't heard anything, we'll try again. Yeah, you bet we will. We really told those bastards, huh? You need more info. You just call me. I'm sorry about that, sir. One minute, he was real calm, and the next, he was screaming. I swear I didn't do anything. Don't worry about it, Marcia. Sometimes the title gives you an edge. Sometimes clients just need to feel they're having an effect. I called an assistant VP and gave him merry hell for five minutes. It probably won't. Excuse me, chief. She seems really desperate, but I've never heard this language before. <laughs> Well, sounds Martian to me, or maybe Alpha Centauri with a lisp. Uh, let me try the Psi amplifier. She looks Regalian to me, and about 10% of Regalians are ESPers. A lot of them never learn to vocalize. What is wanted? Bathroom. Another triumph of education and experience. Now, if I can just be uninterrupted until I finish these reports, I may have time for a sandwich. Yes. Oh, yes, my 10 o'clock appointment. I'm Ralph Morg. You wanted to see me? Sorry, Chief, he pushed by me. Oh, don't worry about it, Jimmy. He's expected. Did I upset your little bureaucratic schedule? Well, slap my wrist. I'll file a protest with your department if you bully my staff again, which is why you're here to see me, I believe. Yeah, the review board reamed my ass good over the last report you filed. Well, you attacked several clients in their homes, and when the caseworker objected, you threatened him with assault. Hey, I was on a case. The ginkgos looked like they might know something, so I pushed a little. You shot up a wedding reception. Look, I said I was friggin' sorry. You sit in your dinky little office and give me shit over what I do in the streets. Well, I could give a damn. I've lost nine partners this year, and some junkie poisoned my hamster. I know what it's like out there. That doesn't give you the right to threaten to make a man eat his own antennae. 
I do my job, and a few ginkgo feelings get bent. Tough. Real tough. If the aliens don't like it here with humans, they can fly away. Look, I am rapidly tiring of your attitude, Mr. Morgue. Whatever is alien about these people was caused environmentally. We are all human, and I will thank you to remember that while you're in my office. Hey, man, we're all garbage, and maybe all we deserve is a bullet and the sweetbreads. But I'm a better grade of garbage than the slime out there. So on the street, I decide who gets it till I get mine. I think perhaps your superiors would be interested in that philosophy. Uh, Don't bother. I'm all they got to do what they want done. They won't fire me because they need me. Now, I ain't slept in three days So I'm going to scarf a steak, shank a whore, and catch 40. See ya. A hero for our time. What a wasted effort that was. Oh well, another hour and I'm due at a staff meeting. One thing about an eventful morning, uh, the rest of the day is pretty quiet. Yes? Chief, sorry to disturb you, but you'd better get out here. There's some kind of dinosaur swimming up the Detroit River right at us. Continued.